on. Welcome to Voice of a Watchman. I'm Brother Pat. This is Joshua Lavio, our, our young uh, watchman in the Lord, and our awesome, faithful deacon, Tony. Hi. Say hello, everybody. Hi. Say hello, Josh. Hey. Hello, everybody. We're just really, really blessed and thankful that uh, Ahaya Yeshaya has us on another week. And uh, to be really, really uh, grateful, content, that, uh, that we know that all things are coming to an end. Uh, the time of all things is at hand. Uh, Peter said, uh, the, these times uh, will come where the elements will burn and the earth will burn and everything else that's on this earth is going to burn up. I believe there will be a nuclear war. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to prophesy and prophesy a lie. Amen, guys? Mm -hmm. What is going to happen? But um, I believe it's either going to be the sun's going to come too close to the earth and it's going to burn, or there's going to be a nuclear war. But guess what? If you're a true Israelite, like we are, and my brothers out there that are listening, you're sealed, amen, with the seal of promise. You're sealed until the day of redemption. And that's if you what hate sin, if you've repented, you've turned from your sins, and you left them behind, and uh, you will be persecuted. Those who live godly in, in, what? in Christ shall suffer persecution. Amen? Paul also says, what, Josh? That uh, through much tribulation, what? what? You will suffer. You will answer the okay. kingdom. Yeah, tell him, Josh. It's going to be to a lot of trouble, suffering. I met a young brother at McDonald's this morning, and um, I just want to share this with you. Uh, my wife goes to a uh, the Learning Center in Arlington here in Jacksonville. And this, this brother was totally open to what I was telling him, that he, he believes he's a Jew from uh, the tribe of Judah, and that they, uh, they also believe that they should worship on Saturday. But his pastor, listen to this, his pastor has his, half his church coming back on a Sunday. I said, see, that's compromise. See, if, you, if you're going to compromise with Rome, if you're going to compromise with the black Pope, if you're going to compromise with, with uh, the Roman Catholic Church, they have actually got a law in our legislative right now going to force everyone to worship on Sunday. And you can't do it. I'll tell you. And I'm going to tell you why. If you keep on worshiping on Sunday, you will take the mark of the beast. You will take the chip in your hand. That's what this Sunday worship is all set up about. Josh? Amen. You want to say something? Brother, give a little interview for you. Yeah, we we just like to thank the Most High for Looking. allowing us to preach the word and Amen. to instruct the people. It's truly a humbling, yeah. a humbling uh, thing to be able to preach the word of the Most High to people. It sure is. It's and it's it's convicting when you when you read the Bible and. You know, something's talking about the way you're living, and it just, it cuts. It the, cuts. The right. word said, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. That's right. Like, what do you say? It's like a, tell the it's like a sander. Yeah, first the word comes like a piece of sandpaper, smooth. Then it'll come like uh, a plane, start planing a little more off you. And then all of a sudden, it'll start chiseling you. <laughs> and then if you don't listen, the hammer comes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Amen. So... I'd just like to say a couple of words in prayer. Most high, we thank you through your yes. son, Yeshia, that yes. you've given us a, a word, a message. The message today is repent, part one. We're going to talk about repentance, and we ask you, Lord, to cut with your word through the stubborn heart of sin. Yes. And also convict us. If, if there's no one use this word, we're going to preach to convict us. We yes. ask all these blessings in your son Yeshaya's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Our, Hallelujah. Our, text, Hallelujah. our text for ministry tonight will be the Isaiah chapter 1, starting with verse 3. Okay. Out there, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. So get your Bibles. 
get a, get a glass of water, relax, and let the Word of God cut. Let the Word of God heal. Let the Word of God lead. Let the, let the Word of God have purpose. It's not purpose-driven life like that devil. What's his name? Rick Warren? That's a blasphemy. He's blaspheming that, 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 that man. He's not even a man of God. Writing those books, the message, the, 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 uh, uh, it's disgusting. That's all self-will. That's all man-made will. Self-will. There's nothing that we're gonna. There's nothing that we're gonna follow anyone like that. That that has a following like that. That has got millions following his self-will teachings. Amen. Go ahead, Josh. All right, Isaiah, chapter, chapter one, verse three. You want me to read, Josh? Mm -hmm. All right. The ox knoweth his owner, and he asks his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Mm -hmm. So let's use this verse to, uh, like this. When, when you're an ox or when you have a yoke on you, you know who's controlling you. That's right. That's right. They, that's right. they don't consider the yoke that's on them. Like a lot of people today will walk around, you meet their dad nonchalant. They don't realize the yoke of condemnation that's on them. That's right. If they don't repent and, and turn and be baptized. Uh, now, baptism is symbolic, but I, I believe that you should be baptized because Christ commanded his disciples to baptize, and you can't, you're not supposed to break a commandment of the Bible. That's right. So, what is the yoke that is on us? Go ahead, Josh. The yoke of sin. Come on, Josh, preach. The yoke of bondage, the sin. The yoke of complacency. The yoke of self-will, pride, arrogance, stubbornness, heart, uh, a stony heart condition is on a lot of people. So the Bible says that the ox knows its owner and the ass its master. So when you have a yoke, as verse two, it talks about a yoke. Verse in verse two, the the same the same way the 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 person you will know the the yoke of the person you come into contact with by the way they act or the way they conduct themselves. And as an an ox, when they're yoked, they they're controlled by the the yoker, if you will, the the one who is guiding them. That's right. That's right. So if if you are truly born of the Holy Spirit and His Spirit is in you, when you read the Bible, either one or two things is going gonna, is gonna to happen to you. It's going to judge you and convict or you're gonna, it's going to harden you if you like being yoked to sin. Right? It's going to either soften you or it's going to make you tough and make you like Paul, he said, how long shall you kick against the prick or the yoke? Once the Most High really starts convicting you, you're either going to kick or you're going to submit. That's right. And now the flesh is the one that kicks up in you that doesn't want to break. So, so a lot of people don't realize when you come out of sin, it's hard right away just to drop your sin and just live automatically like you're holy. That's right. Sometimes... There's a lot of kicking back the flesh wants to do yes, because sir. it enjoys defiling itself. Yeah, it's a it's it natural. It, it's natural. It wants to have its way, Josh. Yeah, it's natural. Yoke is to do what it wants. That's right. The last thing the flesh would do is submit to the 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 highest or the most high in the right. Son, and the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost. The, the last. That's why the Holy Ghost has to, the the Jeremiah says your word is like a fire. And it's like a hammer. So it burns and it breaks. Amen. Amen. So a lot of people break don't. Us, break us, Lord. Break us, the, the, the Spirit. I want, I want you to repent. That's why we have to confront you like this. We, we really want the Most High to write repentance on your heart tonight. Amen. And we're going to be talking about, on Tuesday night for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about repentance. And we're going to be uh, talking out of. Uh, preaching from talking out of the New and Old Testament about hell and what's going to happen to you if you don't repent. 
the consequences of living in sin if you say you're saved? When I say living in sin, continuing to sin, but you think you're saved. Right. The Bible says if the fruit is rotten, the tree is rotten, and the tree will be cut down. John the Baptist said this and thrown into the fire. So how do you know you're saved? You just can't say you're saved and there's no fruit. That's right. So the ass That's right. and the, the cult knows who owns it. So you will know who owns you by the way you conduct your life. You can't say you're yoked to the Messiah and his father and the world. And you're living in backwardness and willful rebellion and breaking the law That's and right. the laws and stat statutes of God. Amen. Verse 4. Okay. Okay. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children who are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord, the, the Most, Most High. They have corrupted the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Uh, Josh, there's a lot in there. I mean, you know, that's America. I mean, that, you know, if that's not America, I don't know what is. So, it's almost as if when when you start to see the sin of a nation, it's 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 like an awe effect. It, it amazes you. Once the Most High starts to show you the sin of a people that is yoked because of the nation it's in. America, if you think about America, America does not keep the laws, statutes, and commands of the Most High and encourages people to break them. No, they don't. To, you, can, it, you can point your fingers at the Christian church. And it, and it, it encourages you to eat pork, mm -hmm. shellfish, which are against the dietary laws of the Most High that you must follow. Now, laws keeping, law keeping by itself cannot save. It's when the Most High writes His laws on your heart and you start following it from within, then you know you're saved. External law keeping sends you to hell because you, good people don't, good being good in itself because you're still a sinner with a nature that's defiled in the sight of God and, and Christ. Cannot save you. Your Preacher, your God, works that's right. have no redeeming effect. None, not at all. Okay. So I'll be right there. a sinful nation uh, and a people that are laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers. So a nation like America is laden with sin and they do evil. And Israel, who is amongst the people, due to the fact that America is wicked, um. I threw aside the Indian way. I, I got fished in the canyon. So. so due to the fact that America is laden with iniquity and a seed of evildoers, see when you're when you're among people that that willfully break the laws, statutes, and commands of God and His Son, the, the seed will get on you. The spirit will get on you, and that will cause you to do the same thing. You'll go to church. You'll go to churches that say, "Well, the law is done away with." Well, they can't show you scripture. They 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 can take a scripture and apply it wrongly. That's right. Like people like to use I, uh, Galatians three eleven and thirteen to say the law is done away with. When Paul's intended purpose was to say that, um, that your that when you start like the because we have to understand Paul was a Pharisee. When he used when he talks about people keeping the law, he was talking about people who keep the law, yet they they tell people to keep the law, yet they don't do it in the, the, the same way. They they they. Uh, Paul is talking about a, a self-righteous uh, Pharisee that uh, is externally keeping the, uh, telling others to uh, keep and obey the laws of Moses, but inwardly there's no conviction in them. They're not living what they're telling people to live. So when he talks about Justifying yourself by the law, that's exactly what he meant. When you take the law and you're not redeemed by Christ and you try to justify yourself in your sin Amen. and you're not saved, you're going to hell because, because look, it's like this. You can't, like I just said, your, your law keeping, your flesh cannot please him. He has to be inside of you. Uh, work. And, and it, salvation is a work. The Bible says, work out your own salvation 
uh, for it is the Most High that is, that is in you, working to do His good pleasure. So, that's right. so there's a fear and trembling when you serve the Most High. Amen. But you have to be careful that the seed of the evil do like in churches, they'll teach you to break the law, to do what you want, to sin, to pretty much they're promoting you to pretty much say you're saved, but live the way you did before your supposed salvation. The Bible says nothing about free will salvation. It's the, the, the Bible does not teach a theology that supports the, the supposed free willism of the church. Um, the Bible does not teach that you have your own choice in salvation. Now, you have to respond, uh, uh, Romans 10, uh, 10 through four, uh, 14. You must confess, believe, and live a life of confession, mean, meaning your life has to confess what you say with your mouth. Amen. But That's right. your confession Preach does confession. not save in that it causes God to save you. Your confession and your faith and your belief and obedience as Paul speaks about... How many times have we heard that, Josh? That people t told us, yeah. that's right, that I made a confession. So, yeah, we, we agree with that. Yeah. That's well, no, what the Bible says to make right. a confession. Make a confession. But the confession is a result of conviction that's right. that is brought down and written in your spirit. That, that's, that's how that I want makes to say. You realize they, make your the sin. they make the confession without conviction. Without really being And then you can tell they're not convicted because their life isn't different. Right doesn't match up. It doesn't line up with the word. Uh, it says, seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, and um, they have forgotten the most high. So, they have forsaken the most high, yeah. So, Same thing. forsaken, or for, I, I meant to say it's forsaken. All right. It's all right. So, the Bible says that they are seed of evildoers, they are corrupt, and they forget. They're, they have forsaken the most high. So, when, when you go to churches that uh, outwardly, they don't even try to hide the fact that they're teaching you not to obey. They outwardly promote and tell you. Stay away from the Sabbath. Yeah, you don't have to worship. You know, yeah. That, that's, that is so, that, that is dangerous. That is dangerous. The Bible says repent and believe. That's and that's right. what our purpose is pre confronting you like this tonight. We want you to repent and believe the truth. These churches are not preaching, telling you the truth. They are teaching you to sin, and that is why you cannot live the way the Tell most. Them, Josh, it's all Roman Catholicism. It's it, 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 it's, 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 in all it's the designed churches. to keep you bound. That's right. It's designed to keep you in sin, That's and right. it's designed to keep you giving ten percent of your money when the Bible clearly specifies that tithing in the Old Testament was food. Mint, cumin, and anise. That's right. Water, right. sheep. Right. That's right. Lambs, oxen. Right. That was tithing. That's right. It was produce of your land. It was a storehouse because they try to make it into the church. Then, so right. No, it's not the church. You don't bring in in the true tithing. You bring it to a storehouse, and when you leave, you they give you something back, don't they, Tony? Yeah, actually, a bond. All right. There's no such thing as a storehouse being the church. So many, so many misinterpret, mis teaching and misconception in the Christian church. Okay, so, so our purpose as ministers is to get you to repent, and to get you to repent, you must be confronted with the, your condition. Christ never hid the condition of the people from the their condition from them. He always said, "Look, you're in sin." Repent or you will perish. He didn't go around trying to, you know, you're all right. Yeah. You're okay. Just you're, the way you are. You're a good brother. You're all right. You drink, don't worry. We all drink at times. You're my brother. <laughs> he's in my heart. He, he's in my heart. He might be in our hearts now because we, we you know, con uh, repented. Heard conviction and walked away. All right. So, some sins will 
will hound you for a long time, but if you hate him enough, he will take he, away. He, I think he does that to really see if you love him. That's right. Like I he wants that. you to yeah, love I do. him. I believe that. I believe that. I believe he'll leave some sins in your life just to test you to see how much you love him. Because that, that Christian song is such a what a lie, Tony, that Christian song. I, I love he loves me because I love him because he first loved me. He he didn't love you in your sin. There's not anybody in this world that God has loved in their sins. He hates sin and the sinner. The Bible says so. Oh, now that brother in McDonald's agreed about that? About uh, he loves everybody? He told me. <laughs> That's the first brother I heard say he's outside on Main Street, besides the ones we know on YouTube. He says, yeah, don't you hate that, brother Patrick? He said, when they tell you that God loves everybody, he died for the whole world. I said, I know. I said, what a lie. He died for the elect. Only so, the elect. Israel. The most high wants you to know that you have to repent, believe, be baptized, receive the Spirit, Amen. and you will be saved Amen. in that order. See, there's a precise order. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2.3.2, uh, 2, 2, 3, 3, read that for, for them. Where is that? 2 John? Corinthians the, the third chapter, and I think it's the third verse. 2 Corinthians. Okay. What is and this is what the Most High does the, when he saves. What's the Tony second one? Corinthians 3, and either second and third verse. All right. For, all right ye are, oh. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by, the, by us, written not with ink, but with... Not with what? Not with ink. Not with ink. But with the spirit of the living... Ahaya, the Most High, not with, in with the what? The, with the spirit of who? Of the living God. Ahaya, that's right. Not in tablets of stones. Not in tablets of what? Stones. Or the law. Right. But in fleshly tables of the heart. So that salvation, when he takes, when he takes his spirit and writes on you. That's right. The way you are to live, and you start living. Yeah, it. but explain that. Now, now they heard that. Now, they, now they're going to think that you know. You don't follow the Lord. Now, that's not what he was saying in there. He just mentioned that because he wants you to know that, that Christ is above all. But I'm telling you something. There are, there are millions of Christians who are misled, believing that they don't have to follow the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, I'm just, I'm, I want to say it again. They, no, they don't save you. What Christ did is our pinnacle at, at the tree at, at Calvary. Amen, right, guys? Amen. But... Who in their right mind, in their right spirit, says that they're saved and they and they keep committing adultery? Right. They're saved and, and, and they keep whoremongering. They're saved and they keep going to bars. They're saved and they keep cursing. They're saved and they keep drinking. They're saved. Right. And, and they and they and they lust and they and they want them their, their neighbor's wife. That's all. That's all the Ten Commandments. You have to repent. So you, so you can't be saved if you're not keeping the Ten Commandments. From. Ver, uh, okay. Back to Isaiah, chapter one, verse five. Oh, let me. Read. I got it. Verse five. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, sorry. I lost my place. Hold on. Hold on, Josh. Yeah, speak for a minute. Just let me find you, Josh. So we see that salvation is when the Most High takes its finger of of providence and sovereignly writes everything you will obey on your heart. That's right. Now, until you realize you have to obey it, he's going to give you grace and mercy until you start. That's right. But you have to read the Bible for yourself and stop letting these, these false churches father you into lies. Amen. See, when, when you set up a pastor over you, just because he has a degree or a, a doctrine, a, a, a plaque on his wall, yeah, yeah. doesn't make him... Anything in God's eyes. Yeah, that's such strange. You, Josh, you know, you hit the nail right on the head. You know, if that's if that's not true, then how come most, 95, 98% of, especially Afro-American pastors, have not told their, their, their listen, Tony, their, their church, their, their congregation, that they're Jews? If they really love them, how come they don't know this? How come they, how, how come they haven't studied this? You know why? Because the white man led them into seminary in America, teaching them their crooked doctrines, especially in Isaiah 28. Amen? All right. Uh, 
Number five, verse five, Isaiah 1, 5. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Right. Ye will revolt more and more. Uh-huh. The whole head is sick. The whole and what? The, the whole head is sick. All right. The, the, the leadership of the church is what? Sick. And the whole heart faint. Okay, read that again. Say that again. The whole, the whole heart faint. So is, is everything good? No. If, if, if the head of the ministry is sick, the whole church is going to be fainting. Okay, let's let's break this verse down. He said, why should ye be stricken? So, when you're in sin, the Most High is going to come to you and say, look, why are you being stricken? Because you're doing something or you're sitting under something that is causing you to be stricken. I don't want you to be, well, let's say it like this. The Most High will chast chasten you until you stop doing what you're doing. That's right. But if you're not chastened, you're a bastard, and he is not, you do not belong to him. That's, that's uh, Hebrews 2, 6 to 8. Amen. So, Amen. Um, he says, Isaiah says, ye will revolt more and more. So when you're being stricken by the Most High and he's correcting you, sometimes you'll keep revolting, and like Paul You'll keep kicking, you'll keep kicking up. And there's a question mark here too, that's right. He's actually said, why are you, why are you questioning why I'm stricken you? He's going to stick, he's going to stick you more and more. Uh, okay, verse 7. No. Oh, no, let's finish it. This is really good. He, wait, you didn't read. Six. Wait. I'm done. From, uh, I'm not yeah. done with verse uh, 5. Uh, hold on, Tom. Yes, verse 5. Okay, Josh. Okay, so. Sorry. Oh, it's Okay. The, the Bible says that you will revolt more and more. So when you're in sin and God is trying to correct you, sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll resist and you'll revolt and you'll go deeper. Now, that can also be caused by the church you're in and what the theology or what they're feeding you from the pulpit. That's right. See, when we set up authority, the worst lies you can hear is religious lies. Because, they, like, you know, keep on saying... God loves you, and uh, you know, don't don't worry. Just keep praying, and you know, um, you sin every day. You can't help it. He understands your weaknesses. He understands. I, I don't believe for one iota that that he understands sin. How can he? He's holy. How can holiness? If God is holy. How can he understand sin? He's got to deal with sin. He doesn't understand it. He's got to punish sinners. He doesn't understand it. He's got to throw people in hell. He doesn't understand sin. Uh -huh. If we are truly saved, then he forgave us for us. Okay, so why is a religious lie, like I just said, why is a religious lie the worst type of lie that you can be fed? Because it gives you spiritual, it gives you comfort and assurance. It, when, you, when you're told you're saved by someone who doesn't know you're saved, when a preacher tells you you're saved, that is a very dangerous position for him to, he's, he's taking spiritual authority over you and telling you your condition. First of all, you should, you should go to no person and ask them that. That should be something you know. And who does that? Who does that? The Catholic Church does that. And a lot of Christians go yeah, to their pastor yeah, 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 and ask yeah. them, am I saved? No one how, can, how can a man know if you're saved? That's right. Yeah, there's no word in the word that says, the word that says, Share your faults one with another. Right. So sense. when when you go to a person and ask them you're saved or not, you're giving that person a lot of power to direct you. That's right. You're giving them a lot of authority to over your spirit. You. And what they say can control you. So if you're not living right and they say you're saved, that gives you a false sense of con uh, comfort and a false sense of assurance. Now you know why there's some churches that are big, because they've done this. This is deception. Squeeze my hand and feel the power, brother. Yeah. Accept Christ. And this is why they're loaded in the churches. So, when you revolt, revulsion and sickness, but bodily sickness in a church and a nation is caused by theology. What are you being taught? When you are sick, it is being something you're eating or taking in mentally that's causing your sickness. The Bible says, what, look, it's not what goes in 
but what go, comes out. What Christ so when, 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 when Christ said that, when you're being taught something, make sure it's biblical because if it's not, it's going gonna, it's gonna to wreck you spiritually. And the Most High and Christ does not want you to be spiritually destroyed by mm -hmm. something you're being taught. Yes. So right. that is why, as preachers, we have to make sure everything we say, even our explanations of the Scriptures, is, is biblical. We can't just view anything out of our mouths because we're putting ourselves in spiritual authority over people. So everything we say has to be biblical. Even explanations have to be biblical. We just can't say anything that comes to our flesh because that can mislead people. And the last thing we want is for you to be misled. Amen. That is why the Most High put us here to stop you from being misled. And when I say that, I don't want you to trust us as if we're God because you, are, you have a Bible. We give you the word. We, you, the we, you have the Bible for yourself. Read the Bible for yourself. Don't trust any person to teach you or to theologize to you about what the Bible says and you don't know it for yourself. That is the biggest way you can be lied to and destroyed right. is by letting somebody have spiritual authority over you and they don't know. I like that word too I use a lot, Josh. Uh, what they're saying. Indoctrinated. They're indoctrinated, indoctrinated into, the, into their doctrine, but not the Bible. Okay. So, hold on. Okay. To finish the verse with, it says, Yeah, let's finish it. The whole head is sick and the whole body faints. So, when a church, when a, let's, let's take this in a, in a, in a, in a, in, and relate it to a church in, in religious wise. When a church is theologically sick, and it, the most problem is, why, why are they sick? Because they went to a Bible seminary that taught them wrong. First of all, you can't find one page in the Bible that supports the idea of going to an a institution and having a person teach you the Bible. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. It doesn't say study. The word. And then go to a school. That no, teach. study under somebody else and let them no, it's tell right. you. No, it doesn't say that. Because that is the reason a well, lot we have, of... We, now, we need teachers. But these teachers, they have to be anointed. They have to know the Word of God. And if you don't know the Word of God, you, you'll never know if they're anointed or not. That's why if, Josh is right. If, you've got to read it If you're just starting to read the Bible, for your, reading the Bible on your own, and you right. go to a Bible seminar, that's a dangerous thing. It sure is. Because you don't know enough of the Bible to stand on your own two feet. That's right. And they can feed you anything they want you to have. And you'll listen. Because you don't have the spiritual strength and fortitude right. to fight the good fight of faith and stand your ground. Amen. That's good, Josh. So I like that. when your head is sick, your whole body faints. That's right. So when you're, the head of the church is sick and has no idea what they're saying to you, your whole body, the whole church body or denomination body, like the Baptists, they don't have no idea what the theologically history teaches predestination, no free will. Well, when I say no free will, in, with compatibilistic, God works in a sense. He punishes us as human beings for our decisions. He punishes us. He doesn't externally make anyone sin. He allows sin, although everything, all actions are determined, nothing is forced on the person to make them sin. God is not responsible for your sin. Right. You are led away of your own lust and enticed. And then when sin is brought forth, it produces death. That's right. That's the wages right. of sin is death. That's right. The, the blessing of God is life in Christ Jesus. So Christ don't Christ. start trying. Oh, yes, Jesus. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. So when, when Christ says that to Paul, he's saying that, when you're truly alive in me, you you really have a, a life, life to in abundance, spiritual, spiritually abundant. Amen, amen. So, awesome, Josh. Awesome. Although nothing material may come your way, God isn't in the business of giving you materialistic blessings. Well, he is. He is in a way, but that's not his 
purpose no, no. of saving you. No, that's right. That's not his purpose. It's to spiritually enrich. That, and that's those lies on those television programs so, of evangelists. When you're sick, you're when you're sick in the body, your whole your whole head is sick and the whole body is faint. Keep going. That is productive. Is good, that is right there. That is mainly because your doctrines are not biblical and you're feeding people lies and they assume what you're saying is the truth. That's dangerous because a lot of hurt, you can minister a lot of hurt to people and honestly be sincere in your heart. When I say salvation is by the free will and grace and sovereignty of God, that is what the Bible teaches. No, nowhere in the Bible does it support the, the free will theology that you can accept Christ without any external conviction. Now, those in salvation, in salvation, a forced thing or is it a thing that you you respond to once you are convicted? You respond to the conviction that is brought upon your soul by the Holy Spirit, and therefore He redeems you. You are not saved because you want to be saved. Nobody wants salvation. There is none righteous, no, not one. Uh, there is none that seeks after God. All are empty sepulcher. They go after their own way. Their mouth, the, there's asps in their mouth. The way of peace they have not known. There's no fear of God in their eyes. So, um, the 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 problem is knowing for yourself if you are saved. So, the problem is. You have to know for yourself without a shadow of a doubt that you are saved. If you are saved, that is good. But don't fool yourself. God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, he shall reap. If he sows to the Spirit, he will reap of the Spirit. If he sows to corruption, he will reap corruption. Don't think... The Bible, the Bible interprets itself. That's why it's not given to any private interpretation. All right, Josh. The Bible will never lie to you. It, the problem is when a person who is taught in a seminary gets in front of you, usually the seminaries teach them the Bible from one or in one slant or another slant. They don't really teach you the whole Bible. They teach you what they want you to know. That's it. And they leave the rest That's it. alone. That's right. The majority of the reason why a lot of black preachers don't know who they are is because their seminaries don't have not told them who they are. Yeah, they've hid it from them. On purpose. So, verse chapter and 6. Verse 6. Verse 6, Tony. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and purifying putrefying putrefying sores. Oh yeah, okay. Putrefying sores. Okay. okay. They have not been closed, neither bound bound up, up neither modified with ointment. Mollified with ointment. Mollified. In other words in other words, these these sores that are in the church these sores that are in these ministries in, in the Christian church. That the, yeah, this white these these bruises, these wounds. It, nobody's really ever come to really heal them, to tell them the truth. They've heard false doctrine year, week after week, right? Month after month, year after year. And you know what happens? Listen out there, Christian church. It takes years, doesn't it, Joshua, to come back to truth. Right. If you've been indoctrinated into all these lies that Christians teach about God so loves the world, I mean, I could go on and on all night and, and, and give you probably a hundred scriptures with, where they take them out of context. Um, it takes years, and many Christians will not admit it. They will not, they will not ask the Lord to humble them, to teach them again the Bible. They don't even believe that, that the Bible is a black man's book. If you tell some white people that, they'll hate you. They won't talk to you. So we got a mess out there, Christian Church. Go ahead, Josh. 
I want you to read the verse again and read it slow, and and I'm going to stop you. Okay. Verse six. I got it. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. Okay, stop. So Jeremiah, uh, I said Jeremiah, Isaiah said, due to the fact that Amer uh, that is that Israel is in sin, they Just are see the corruptors, they are. Um, you know, there are seated corruptors, iniquity is in there, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken, uh, they are revolt, they, the whole head is sick. And then he goes into verse 6 and says, the, from the sole of the foot, head, even to, from the sole of the, from the sole of the foot, even to the head, unto the head, there is no soundness in it. So he, he continues to show the people of Israel, and I'm try, and we hope we can show the church that when there's doctrinal error and, and sin in, in the church, there can be no soundness in, in the theology that you hear. It's always going to pollute you more. It's always going to weaken you and make you weak. It will never build you up, edify you. Um, it will always be a wind of doctrine that will toss you to and fro with the, the cunning of men that laying white to deceit. That's, right. um, that's in Ephesians uh, 4, about 11, 10 through 13 around there, I think. Um, so, is, is, it, is it wrong? Is, whose fault is it that these... That, First of all, it's the person's fault, first of all, because they don't know anything about the Bible when they step foot in a church. That's right. They allow the preacher to tell them what the Bible is saying, and that's a dangerous position to be in. When you let some man um, who may not know the Bible for himself tell you what it means. That's right. Amen. That's good, John. Study to show yourself approved. Don't let someone do studying for you and... And think you're approved, and let them interpret everything for you, because then they become your guide, and they can lead you. Slave master. They can guide and put a yoke of religion and no power on you, and they can put you in any direction. Amen. Um, That's right. Jeff. They 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 can lead you any way they want you to go, and it's not usually the right way. So there's no soundness in it. The fact is. In the modern religious, uh, uh, so-called Christian religion of America, there's no soundness. First Corinthians uh, 1 verse 10 says, um, I beseech you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in, in the a name of God that we, that we all speak the same thing, that we be perfect in uh, mind, perfectly joined together, that we, that we have the same judgment, that we speak that we believe, speak, and say the same thing, be perfectly joined together, be one in mind, and joined in judgment. So, uh, so the the. I guess that I guess that ends all kinds of my own interpretation. Huh, Josh? That ends the. He said that there be no divisions among you That's if you right. you have one mind and speak the same now, thing. Now, what do Paul mean by divisions? Denominations. Baptists. Catholic, or oh, they, they go to hell anyway. Now, the, 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 not the, maybe not some of the people, but I'll tell you that whole that whole framework of, of the Catholic Church, even in the Pentecostal Church now, are, are, are demonic because the the black pope in Rome owns all the churches in America, and anyone who's following their ways is going to be in a lot of trouble in these last days. So so be careful what you read. Be careful who you sit on the. Right, so it's dangerous. It's real dangerous. There's no soundness in any of this stuff in America because there's no truth being spoken. There's no conviction coming from the pulpit. Come on. Therefore, the people that are in these false religious systems are they going to be saved? cannot live with conviction. That's right. How are you going to live a, a life of conviction if you don't hear? First of all, the person that's preaching has to believe what they're preaching is true before they even try to preach anything right. or tell you anything. Amen. How are you going to be convicted of anything if the person that, that um, is preaching to you doesn't believe what they're saying? 
A lot of preachers don't believe anything they say. That's why their churches are wrecked and there's no soundness in it. Awesome. So they are not... Okay, continue. I, um, there's no soundness. Okay. Yeah, I, but wounds, bruises, and pu putrefying sores. Stop. So there's nothing but wounds, bruises, and sores. The Bible says when you prophesy to smite your hands together and stop your foot. In other words, be loud and get their attention. The Bible says in, 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 Ezekiel, in uh, Isaiah 58, to show, to sound the trumpet, spare not. Let the people of Judah show the people of Judah their sin and my people their transgression. Amen. So lift up the voice. So when you preach, there's no, nothing about being soft and tender. It's like when you go to a church. Lullaby. It's wonder how people stay asleep, awake. They do, they, and they do go to sleep. <laughs> they fall asleep in a lot of churches. I would if care. you don't give me your 10%, you're a curse. Yeah, you ever hear that? Jeez. Curse them. Well, they're cursed. So there's bruises, wounds, bruises, and putrefying sores. So it starts as a wound. A wound, sometimes a wound, a wound is is sometimes not easily recognized by the person who's wounded. It's hidden. Amen. It's, under, right. it's hidden under yes. the surface. That's right. So, so why is it hidden? Because it's not being addressed. It's like if you have cancer and you don't know. You have cancer, but it's going to destroy. It's, it's, it's under your skin and you can't tell it. Like, like Brother Day, remember Wilkerson? He says, if I, I'm a doctor in, in, uh, in, in the Most High. And, and if I know you got cancer in there, well, I'm going to dig it out and get that cancer out before it destroys you. Amen? That's our Amen. job, to get rid, yeah, of, the to get rid of the people. cancer. Cancer, you know what happens? If it stays there, it affects the whole what? Body. So there's, the problem is people are wounded, have wounds, they have sin, and it's, it's hidden inside of them. So there's wounds. So how's it come out? By there's bruises. Strong, convicting word. Okay, what's a bruise? A bruise is a wound that's noticeable. A person that's sinning notices their sin, and they go to a church, yet, yet the, the message has nothing, no conviction, no sternness, no real, no true love. Come on. There's no, if, you're, if a man loves you and he sees that you are, are sick, and you have a, a, a cancer on you, he's going to tell you, he's not going to talk softly, he's going to yell, he's going to say, you have cancer, right. get rid of it. Amen. <laughs> if you have sin, you've got to get rid of it. Amen. Preach it, Josh, preach it. That's right. I don't care about your feelings, your soul matters. Where's I'm, your love? <laughs> you ever hear that? I hate Where's that you? spirit on you. people. Oh, 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 and this brother, from Arthur, you know, he, he said the same, he agreed with a lot. A lot of a lot with me today about the, all these preachers telling everybody uh, that true Christian love is is really hugging somebody and and holding them. You know, Paul never did that. Paul just framed the word. He warned. Yes, he showed love by telling truth to people. So and this is what brought people out of sin: telling people the truth. So love demands what you tell the truth. I told you. And correct. I love the man's correction. That's right. So a bruise is a wound that's more noticeable. So if you're in sin, you know you're you're you know you have sin in your life. The problem is it's being covered up and it's being like Novocaine. You got spiritual people are giving you Novocaine. It's putting you to sleep. You know you're in sin. You know it. it it's not. It's not. It's it's still under. It's sort of un. It's not noticeable to people. But you know it. It's a bruise. Like other people can't see it, but you know it's there. So the question is, why go to a church when you know you're a sinner? You know that you're not pleasing God and Christ and stay there because you love your sin. 
let's make no no shortcuts about it, and let's get to the point. You love your bruises and your wounds. Hmm. You love staying and being the way you are. You love it. And the last thing you're going to do is sit under a preacher who loves the Most High and loves you enough to confront you in your lifestyle and say, look, there's something not right with you, and you better change or you're going to go to hell. Amen. Because if you don't change, that's where you're going to end up. If you don't repent, let me say that again, if you do not repent, you will end up in hell, and it will be your fault. You cannot blame your father, your preacher, your son. You cannot blame preacher, your, your wife. Amen. You can't blame God. The last person that's going to be blamable for your you going to hell is God. You can't go to God on Judgment Day and say, well, I know I'm a sinner, but I wasn't really that bad of a sinner. <laughs> See, you're judging your sin by human standards. That's right. Come on, Judge. God's standard is perfection. And if you fall short in anything mentally, in your mind, or in outward uh, uh, performance of his standard, you are a sinner. Amen. Amen. Come on. <laughs> awesome, Josh. See, awesome. Th the problem with you Christians, and we, we understand we came out of this false religion a, a while ago. And sometimes it, it takes a lot of time to come out of the mindset thing, like you, you have to sin. Yeah. Well, First John 2 verse 3, 9 says, Those who are born of God cannot commit sin, for the seed of God remains in them, and they cannot sin because they were born of God. Where in that verse does that say that you can sin and get away with it? That's right. And actually, where does that say you can sin? A sin as a believer at all. That's right. Come on. That's right. Now, temptation, the Bible says you have to overcome and fight and be patient towards so in, when you're tempted. Right. That's the hardest time to actually overcome. That's right. You can overcome. You're, over, you're not really overcoming something until you're tempted with it. That's right. Right? That's right. You can't say you're an overcomer unless you've been tempted with sin. Christ was tempted in all areas, but without sin. Amen. He, in other words, to be tempted with sin, he had to have a nature like us that was susceptible to being tempted. That's right. He had to, he had to be able to be wounded in a sense. To now, he never sinned, but he had to have the ability to be, to have temptation where it was actually real. He was tempted. He was tempted to rule the world. In well, all his things. father. Now he wouldn't take the. See, the, the whole temptation behind that is Satan wants you to take glory from the Most High, which only belongs to him. He wants you to rule your own life. He doesn't want the Most High to rule you. Amen. He wants you to sit on your throne and, and, and rule you when only, he, when only the Most High can rule. Amen? Hallelujah. So there's Hallelujah. wounds. Hallelujah. What's a bruise is not... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the Most High, once a wound is not, and a bruise is not dealt with, it becomes a sore, an open putrefying. What, what is a putre, what is putrefying mean? In other words, it's open and it stinks. It's open to, you, not only to you, everyone around you, they know, they see that beer, that, that porno magazine, that web, that porn website that you, you're on. That that um, that cigarette, that marijuana, that cocaine. That you. First of all, what would make somebody want to put cocaine in their body, or PCP, or angel dust, or any of these? You realize you could kill yourself with that. That as soon as that that could ki that could kill you. You don't realize you're taking your life in your hands. Actually, in a sense, you're being your own god. You're saying, that's "I rule right. my life." No, that's right. You can't do that. He has to rule. He has to be king over everything. Now, he allows you to choose to sin so he can correct you. That's right. He allows you, but he doesn't want you to sin, so he doesn't have, the less you sin, the less you're going to have to repent of when you see him. That's and right. the less you sin, the less you're going to have to repent on this side. Less, less and the answer less you're right. going to draw back when you see him. That's right. So, uh, a crucifying sore is something not only you're aware of, but your, everyone you know is. Like the analogy I just gave, they see the, your cigarette, your beer bottle, your, your, porn, your porn magazine that you're reading, your, but you have a Bible. And you're trying to quote and talk about the Bible with them. 
<laughs> that's really denial. Say something about that, Dad. Yeah, that's, I, I've met, look, I'm not going to sit here and, and say that I haven't struggled. Uh, as, as a young believer, I sat in Christian churches, and it, it's almost destroyed me. I'm 65 now, and I've just come out of some sins that, that I was struggling with for years and years, beating these Christian churches, listening to these pastors say that, you know, you're only human, you know, just repent. If you, as soon as you sin, repent. As soon as you sin, repent. As soon as you sin, repent. And that's the biggest lie. That's what's got me in trouble more than anything. Now that I know the truth, and now I'm coming out, I, I see myself hardly ever sitting now, and I know that I was sitting on the false doctrine. And I, I'm, I'm going to tell you that in love. You do not have to sin. Now, you have to be aware of the enemy that he is going to tempt you. He, he is going to tempt you with women if you're married. He's going to tempt you in the gym. I'm tempted in the gym. I can't believe how women dress in the gym. I don't even want to go anymore, you know, because my wife... My wife is not like that, you know. She doesn't even want to go to the gym. I, I tell you the truth, I'm probably going to stop going. You know, uh, it's just it's just a mess out there. I, I I just don't want to find myself in a place where I have to be tempted. I mean, I mean, I have to live in this world, but I, I'm not of this world. I don't have, I'm right, Tony. I don't have, I don't have to give in to this, yeah. this, this stuff, this this slut junk. That uh, it, and you know what is the sad part about it is, guys out there, Christian church, the the women. Always say, well, why do men look at me in the church? Well, why don't you stop dressing the way you're dressing, and they won't look at you. A, a man that's really looking for a beautiful Christian woman, you're not supposed to have a dress where he sees your whole leg and part of your, your, your backside, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 your, and your breast sticking out of your blouse. If that's holiness to do, I'll tell you, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. Okay, so. Amen? The sword that. No, they, they, they don't have to answer that. Open no, the women people. have to answer for that, too. Why is it that way? Now, he answers this question. You may ask me asking yourself, why is this sin in my life? And I want to get rid of it. And we're going to tell you why, ahead, you're, why it hasn't, you haven't been able to identify it or really deal with it. He says, Isaiah says, neither uh, they have not been bound, been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified. With ointment. So when you bind something, when you close something up, when when you see that when you see that you have a sore or a sin, the first thing you should do is you know get get it and close it up. Close it yourself. Get the Bible and read and and find conviction in the in the word and start living a life of convictions. So it's not closed up because you don't know how to deal with it. You're, you're allowing it to become worse and worse and worse until it's wide open and it stinks. And not only you know it, your family and your friends know it. So it, it's not bound up, closed up, or bound. A bound or a bandage, it's not, it has nothing over it. So... You can, you, when you're in sin, you're loving your sin. You love your sin. You're not going to want someone to come to you and try to bind it up. Or the last thing you're going to want is someone to expose it to you and tell you you have to bind it up. No, that's, that's what I want. I want. I want it for everyone. If you have to be willing to, to have it exposed so you, so you know to do it. Because if you don't sit under these kind of preachers, like ourselves and other preachers that, that are that, that, that love people out there in the world and preach against sin, why do you think there's so much sin in the church? They don't preach against sin, Tony. Yeah, they don't. They don't preach against sin. Not, not that we're perfect. Nobody is perfect, but we're trying to live perfect, and we are. Most of the time, we will live a perfect life as long as we know how to, get, how to live the sin nature and not to, have, not to have the sin nature have dominion over us. Now, now let's, let's... I find myself less and less, Josh, being, being even tempted when I'm... Look into a Calvary every day, Tony. Yeah. Let's look at verse 13 now. All right, let me read. Yeah, verse 13. Bring no more vain oblations. Okay, say that again. Bring no more vain oblations. So he calls... Okay, finish it. Increase. Incense is an abomination unto me. You know, you know the Catholic Church, you know, the, 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 like this with the incense? Oh, that's abomination to God, man. Isn't that right? Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths. 
I the calling of assemblies. I cannot I cannot away with it. Away with it. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Now, hey, I want to explain something here. See what it says? And Sabbaths. Alright. Right there, the Lord is talking. He's disgusted there with people who are not keeping the Sabbath. He's even letting that go. That's what he's really saying. I can't even allow you to, to, to worship on the Sabbath. That's how, that's how profane you are and sinful you are. Go ahead, Josh. So I want to match this up with something I read in the... Um, this, this uh, I think... That read Colossians three. It's not that God. It's not that the Most High didn't want them to keep the Sabbath. They were polluting the Sabbath. Because that's they what he said in there. Yeah, I want to get that straight before they say, you know, well, we thought you said that you keep the Sabbath. Well, we do keep the Sabbath. Okay. We're supposed to. Okay, Josh. Go to read Colossians three verse sixteen, and we're going to match this up with the spiritual, the spiritual, the spiritual thing that he's trying to get apart. We're going to give you a precept out of the New Testament. Colossians what? Three sixteen. Uh, Galatians. Where's Colossians? You have the Galatians? It's after Philippians. I have the Philippians. Okay, hold on. Right, Colossians where? Three no. verse sixteen. Three sixteen. Colossians three sixteen out there. Okay. Awesome. Three sixteen. Okay, I got it. Okay. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Right. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the most high. So so when Isaiah was saying that he's 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 trying to bring out a spiritual condition that when you try to go in the church and you try to offer oblations and, and incense or types of praise in the New Testament. Right. That's right, Josh. But physically, back then, they would literally drag incense and sacrifice. But to us, that's a spiritual condition. When you try to go in and praise the Most High and do what, you know, on a, whenever you do it, um, and you're living in a, in a lifestyle of sin, He's saying your oblations are vain and they, they, right. they're, they're ugly to me. I don't want nothing to do with you if you're not right in your practice, but you're trying to worship me publicly. That's right. That's right. That's so right. these Hebrews were living in blatant open sin with no nothing binding their, their – they weren't dealing with their sin and they're repenting towards the Most High and living right, but yet they were coming toward him in, in the temple and they were trying to worship and live like – a double life, pretty much. Right, that's it. Okay, so verse 16. Oh, you just read that. Oh. No, Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah. Isaiah. Right. Isaiah 16. 116. Make your, uh, wash you, make you, you clean. Come on. Put away the evil of your doing ah. from before my eyes cease. To do evil. All right, stop. He says, wash, make yourself clean wash. from your evil doings from before, and put them from, from before my eyes. So did he say, I'm going to wash you? Although Ezekiel does talk about that. He, he's going to wash us after he gives us the spirit. But here he's saying, wash yourself. Get, yeah, you have with to it purify yourself as I am pure. Don't think the most high. See, what he's saying, Isaiah said, look, you know you're in sin. You're trying to just don't do it. Get rid of your sin. Right, don't just then you'll be accepted. Then once you wash yourself, verse 17 says, Learn to do good, seek just judgment, judgment. neither oppress, relieve the, relieve, the, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, and plead for the widow. So we are to That's do awesome. the cause of the just. We're supposed to take care of the missing franchise. Disenfranch verse 18. All right. Come now. Let us reason together, say the Most High. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So awesome. when you cleanse yourself and make yourself right with him mm -hmm. through repentance and faith, 
then you'll be clean, and then you'll be made acceptable in his sight. Now, let's finish with verses um, 28, 29, and 30. All right. 28 and 29 and 30. I'll read, I'll, 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 I'll read and I'll explain. Okay. Verse uh, 28 of uh, Isaiah chapter 1 reads, Go ahead, Josh. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Most High shall be consumed. Mm. So clearly he doesn't love sin. Or no. love sinners. No, you don't love sinners. So look, Isaiah says, look, when you live in sin and you're... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. See what is it? Tell me you have your service. Just tell me. All right. Who's a mic? No. no. Okay. Sinners. Uh, so... God says, look, when you're living in blatant open sin towards the Most High, and you're trying to justify, like you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be wiped off the planet. You're going to be destroyed. Amen. So don't think you can go to a church and live in sin and say you're saved. You're going to be wiped off, wiped out. So because the Most High is going to consume you, he says. Don't deceive yourself. Don't think you can live in the flesh and reap us and righteousness you can't you have to live a life through the holy spirit and repentance amen repent the bible says and believe all right uh verse 29 says for they shall be ashamed of their of their oaks of the oaks of the oaks which they have desired and ye shall be confounded of the gardens that they have ye have chosen so why does he say this? Because you have to understand the history of Israel. When you read verses like this, they would set up groves and trees and worship them. They would set up uh, groves like Christmas trees. When when you when you cut a Christmas tree down, um, you are sacrificing your family to uh, unclean spirits. That's right. Come on, Josh. you're worshiping the devil. Because all that stuff came from pagan cultures of the northern of north northern Europe. All that stuff is pagan, and you're you're actually committing the same sin that the Most High punished His people for. Repent, the Bible says, and believe, or you shall perish. Perish. All right, Josh. Let me read on. For you shall twenty nine be as an oak whose leaf fadeth. And as a garden who, fate, uh, who has, has no, no water. So if you don't get rid of your sin and all the idols in your life, you're going to wither and you're going to die. You're going to be like a tree that fades because it has no nutrition. And you're going to be like a garden who has no water. Now, he uses water here as a sense of nutrition because when you water a garden, it grows. So if you don't get rid of sin... Your spiritual life cannot grow. It stays the way, and it also declines. It gets worse. Amen. See? Amen. That's true. You Come cannot on, You cannot sit there and justify yourself and say, well, I'm good. I'm all right, when you're not. For the strong shall be as, be as tow, shall be, and the maker of, of it shall speak as a... Of it as a spark. As a spark. And they shall both burn together and none shall quench them. Wow. So the Most High is saying, look, I want you to repent, get right, because I don't want to have to burn you. But if you continually rebel and lay your sin openly before me, I'm going to have to. See, the Most High cannot let anything, any defection of his law go unpunished. He must punish all, everything, everything that is done against him. He yes. cannot let sin, anything, anything wrong go unpunished. Amen. He'll either cause someone to be punished on earth or they'll be punished in the next life. So that is a motivation to get, get right, you know, 
get rid of your sin on this side so you won't have to answer for anything on the other side. Amen. Repent. Amen. Repent, believe. And his ways are not what? Always. Grievous. His laws are not grievous. Laws are not grievous. The law is not hard to do. You've just been taught that you can't do it. The Bible says... The we admitted tonight that we hadn't sinned in our life because we sat in Christian churches and we couldn't come out of them because of what we've been taught. Now, I'm not saying all Christian churches need that, but most do. The majority do. Oh, yes, they do. A good percentage. That's so right. You, you have to understand, it takes a lot of love and a lot of compassion and yes. care for, for preachers to get in front of you and tell you you're wrong. You're, you're not right about... And it may even be strong to say that you may not be saved because of the way you're living. Your works condemn you. If you're not, if you're living in blatant open sin, and your sores are open, and they smell, look, you, ha you better. You have to bind those up. You mm -hmm. can't allow sin. We're gonna pray to eat you before we, before we leave to tonight. eat at you. That's you cannot right. allow sin to dwell in you. You cannot allow it to take, take take a position in you because it's going to build strongholds. It's going to give you false false assurance. This is so true. The, the Jews who were doing this in Israel, I guarantee you they believed they were saved. They were living in blatant, open, willful sin, and yet they believed they were All just. All the idols that they brought into the temple, they, they were justifying themselves. They were saying, and that's what we do. We, we bring idols into our temple. And we all heart. realize they're idols, right, Josh? Your spiritual Jerusalem or your heart right. cannot be defiled with anything other than Him. Amen. He will. He's a jealous God. He He's forgiving, but He's jealous. He will not share you with someone else. See, see the 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 idea the the thing the churches have forgotten about the Most High. A main characteristic is not only that He's holy. He's He's jealous. He's like a, a woman. Well, he's not feminine, but understand my what, what I'm about to say. Like when a woman falls in love with a guy, like first love, she becomes super jealous of that per, of that man. She That's doesn't right. want him with nobody. That's right. She doesn't want to be shared. She wants everything, all his attention, all his affection, everything he has, Amen. she desires. Now, that is a picture of God or the Most High and our relationship with him. Amen. If you are in relationship, if you are, not you are, but if you are, the Most High will not give, not share you with anything. He will, he wants you to himself. He is a possessive entity. He will not allow you to share, be shared with anything. He, he, he only desires you. He wants you to himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, he, he will, see, if you understand, the main idea, the main reason, the main way to come out of sin is to realize how jealous he is and that he's possessive and what he'll do to you if you don't repent. He can, he can put you on the deathbed if, if you want to take it that far. Amen. He, he can put you in a hospital. He can break your leg. He can cause you to get in an accident. He can cause cancer to come on you. He can cause all sicknesses and diseases to be manifested in your body. But nothing happened. See, when you're really in sin, it's, it's hard to come out. It is. It's hard to just stop at, immediately. It's it's hard for you to stop your sin because you you love it. Let's be honest. Let's, let's not cut corners. You love your lifestyle. You love what you're doing or else you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't, if you didn't love what you're doing, you would have no pleasure in doing it. Amen. There is no pleasure in sin. There's no pleasure. There's, the, the only pleasure, it, ha it makes your flesh happy. For a second. For a second, then once <laughs> you're done, yeah. once you're done with it, that's it. it there, it, it's a flat, empty feeling. It sure is. See, the flesh profiteth nothing, but the spirit giveth life. John six sixty three. See, 
the, the problem is when you have sin and your flesh is really ruling you, there's nothing profitable that can come out of that. Nothing. There's only profit when you're being ruled and run by the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can give you true meaning and true, true existence in this life. Because, look, all this materialism is going to burn. It's going to be quenched. It's going to be destroyed. Where will you be on that day? Let me say that again. All this materialistic stuff that we, all the clothes, all the food, all the everything, money, everything. everything will be oh utterly burnt and destroyed. Where will you be? Where will your heart be when that day comes? Amen. Amen. Where Amen. will Hallelujah. your intentions, where will your affections, where will your love and where you will, where will your soul and your heart's passions be? Because if they're not on the Most High and doing the will of His Son, Christ, you're, it's going to be a very bad day for you. So, look, it's hard. It's it's hard for you to be confronted right away. It's it's hard for somebody to just come and tear things off of you at, at in. It's hard. Why? Because you're used to these things being covered up. Right. And and you don't want things to be torn up and shown to you. Right. Come on, Josh. That's right. You don't want your sin to be really shown to you so you can see the, its destructive power. Come on. The only thing sin can do Amen. to you Preach. is destroy. The only thing sin, the only purpose sin can serve is to wreck and morally decay you. The only thing sin can do to you is destroy your family, your your husband, your wife, your children. The only thing sin can really do is kill. Mm -hmm. The only thing sin, the only thing sin nations. can do is kill you, and it kills nations. Look at America, That's right. homosexual marriage. Yeah, his brother said this today. He told me that too. He says, "What's happened?" I said, "What's happened? It's over. It's all finished. America is done. It's done for." All, all America is waiting for now is to get nuked. That's it. We hope you repent. Like I said, prepare yourself. We're going to be talking about repentance for the next couple weeks here on Tuesday night. With the sole purpose, we want you. We don't. We want you to come out of these churches. Get out of these churches. They're not telling you the truth. You're staying in sin because you're not being told how to how to get victory. You're not being told to keep the, the Sabbath. Amen. You're not being told to do to eat the right foods. You're being told lies that the law's done away with when Christ never taught that. You're being taught lies. And the the sole purpose of it is to keep you bound and keep you lied and keep you deceived. I, I, I'm, t I'm totally convinced that Christianity is, is a slave man's ministry. It, it's a slave man's religion. It, ba it bounds people. It puts them in sin. It keeps them in sin. It keeps it, false. Yeah. It gives them they're false happy for a little while when they go. And, and when they leave, they're the same old person. That's what, that's what, that's what religion does to you. So we hope you've gotten a lot out of, out of tonight. And, uh, I know sure we have. Do. I sure do. And I hope to God, I hope to, uh, that, the most high. that the Most High will open your spirit to the sin that you're troubled with and that you will let it go and you'll walk away from it and ask the Most High to help you and He will. He'll show you how bad and dangerous and sick it is. This whole nation is under a curse, America, because of sin. Um, I don't care how pretty the Satan paints a picture, right, about uh, how good it's going to be or how good better it's going to get. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. This is this is a lie. I believe this nation is going to crash soon, too. So get ready, Christian church. Repent, like my son said tonight. As for me, too, we have to repent, all of us, Tony. Repent of everything and just walk away from everything that's of evil, uh, everything that's, that's not right in the eyes of our our maker, Ahaya Ashaya. So I hope with with the uh, leading of the Holy Spirit, you heard from uh, my son tonight, Josh and Tony and myself, and we love you. 
we want to say shalom. Peace be on you. Peace be on Peace, blessings be on you. And remember, keep looking. He's going to come back the third time to take his elect home. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.